Hi everybody, I'm Jen with J&T Creations and Allegory Gallery here in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. Thanks for tuning in again today. Please share, like, hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment, tell us what we're doing good, tell us what we can improve on. And I would love to see what you've created, so please visit our Facebook page, Allegory Gallery Design Challenges, and post what you've created. Thank you so much. Let's get started. So we are going to make this cute little mushroom resin pendant today. You will not be able to find this little mushroom in stores because I did make this one out of polymer. If you know. If you know polymer, sorry, something fell. <laughs> um, if you know how to do polymer, this is just a cute little white uh, stem I made with a little mushroom cap and I painted the little dots on there. Um, feel free to use some things that you find in nature. Just make sure that they are completely dry. But tackle the polymer. Maybe one day we will make these mushrooms on camera too. All right. So I have my little tray of goodies here. I've got the mushroom. I've got some sand. I've got some moss that I broke up. And I have this cute little star thingy I found in like a stationary kit or something. Um, and I have a pinch bale. You'll need that too. Some handy dandy tools. One of these little dobbies here. This is actually a polymer tool, but you can use it for like painting dots on mushrooms and all kinds of things. Moving things in polymer trays. Uh, you will need a silicone tray too. Um, this is really inexpensive, especially if you have coupons. Uh, we have a UV light because this is UV resin. I have this little pokey thingy here. This is actually a, uh, an earring wire um, smoother, but that is exactly the same size as that little doohickey there to put the bale through. Um, you might need some sandpaper or I just use a nail file because they're cheap and I have them. And then we have the UV resin itself and some tweezers are kind of handy in case you didn't want to handle the littles. So, Getting started, the first thing we are going to do is not shake our resin, and we are going to make sure that it's room temperature. Resin pours much better, and you'll have much better results if it is room temperature. If it's chilly, bring it in a warmer room, let it warm up, put it in a sunny window, but not if it's UV. <laughs> um, and in a clear bottle. Make sure it's not in a clear bottle. The great thing about UV resin is you have a lot of work time with it because it will not harden in the air. So you get to take your time and make sure everything is where you want it and push it around if it's not. And if you see any air bubbles, you have extra time to get rid of those air bubbles. The thing with air bubbles, make sure that you do not Squeeze the bottle too fast. Make sure you don't shake the bottle, roll the bottle, and pour it in a solid stream if you can, instead of start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. There's that. And the first thing you wanna do is put a th nice little thin layer in so that you can get your little thingy stuck. And we're gonna actually use the UV light to cure that first pour that we do. And it also kind of adds a little depth to your piece. So you can put things in layers. Make sure that your mold is clean. This one's got a little dirt in there, but we're not using that one. We're gonna use this one. All right, and make sure you work in a well-ventilated space. This is stinky and you don't wanna breathe it in. So let's pour a little bit here in our tray. I'm pouring slow and steady. There is a little air bubble in there. 
that's easy to deal with if you have a pin or one of these little handy dandy pokers. So just kind of spread that out. A paintbrush works too, although I do not like cleaning the resin off of paintbrushes. So I don't recommend the paintbrush. Unless the resin is dry and you're just using it to move around like your sand, if a little spot of sand got in the wrong spot. And I did not put anything in my mold. When this cures, it will come right out. If you have any air bubbles, you notice that you're not able to get out of there. Kind of push them to the side where you're not going to see them. In this case, we're not going to see them in the bottom of the pendant. Because it's going to be covered in sand. I just kind of redistribute that. Make sure you get it in the sides as well. Sometimes air bubbles are unavoidable. Sometimes they're really close to the surface and the great thing about resin is you can sand it. That's why we have the sandpaper or the nail file. See, look at this. Look how long I can spend on this and just take my time and make sure that it's exactly where I want it. All right, so let's cure that. It only needs to be under the UV light for about a minute. And these are also really inexpensive. You can also, here's the thing I forgot to mention, you can also cure this in the sunshine. So on a nice sunny day, put it outside or put it on a really sunny windowsill for about 10 to 15 minutes and it's going to do the exact same thing. A minute's a really long time when you're not talking. <laughs> and fun fact, you can also use this little guy when you're doing your nails and you've got the gel that needs to be cured under the UV light. It's a multitasking tool. So let's add our sand now. And I have a little scooper thingy on the end of my plastic tweezers here. So I'm going to do my very best to do a controlled pour. You don't need too much. You want to make sure that it's not going to reach the top of that pendant either. Because if any is touching the surface of that, you're going to feel it through the resin. It's not going to be nice and smooth. So just use whatever tool you have. Spread that out or get it back in line where you want it. Can you hear that? That resin is completely solid. This little job, you did the trick. Okay. Next, I'm going to add my little mushroom. Okay, 
And I will have to kind of dig it down in a little bit. So once again, you just want to make sure that that is not going to rise up and be beyond the top of that resin. Let's add in some of our fun little moss. I'm just going to do a little dab on that one. I'm happy with just like a little sprig of grass. And then here comes our sun. That's what I'm calling it. I don't want that straight either. Mm. There. When you are happy with the placement of all your stuff, it's time to pour the next level. So once again, solid stream. Don't shake it. Before you start squeezing, give it a little chance to kind of work itself to the tip of the bottle. When you get to your sand, you may want to stop and kind of dig in a little bit with your tool, just because sometimes that's where some bubbles like to hide. This bubble that's right there, I'm going to work that down to the bottom. And then push that moss down in there because that was at the surface. See how great this is? You've got so much time on like traditional resin. I am going to dab just a little more in there. So make sure everything is embedded down in there. Work everything into the sides there. Great. I'm happy with that. I'm going to pour just a little bit more in there. 
make sure that that mushroom was covered. And there's a giant herb of watermelon. I'll rip that up. If you over pour, it's okay because you can sand it. If you under pour, it's okay because you can add after you've cured it. And you can also use your resin as a glue if you wanted to add a bale. And it wasn't the kind that you can just pinch bale. Um, if you have something like a metal part you wanted to glue in there, then you can use resin as a glue as long as the light can reach it. If it's covered up by a finding and the light can't touch it, then you are out of luck. Alright, I just need a fine little piece of wire to pop that bubble. So I'm kind of working that bubble up to the surface a little bit to try to This is why you want to avoid the air bubbles in the first place, because they are not easy to remove once they get in there. And make sure all of your moss stays submerged. So you get a nice smooth surface. Oh, yeah. I think there's a little pop of air in there trying to push that up. And don't worry if you have covered the little spot where it makes the hole the pendant because that's why we have this handy dandy little tool there. It's going to be really easy just to pop that last tiny little bit in the surface. And once you're happy with that, it's time to seal the deal. So I like to do this for about five minutes and then I take it out of the mold. We're going to let this cure for about five minutes and we'll see you back. Alrighty, we are about five minutes into that curing time, and now it's time to cross our fingers. So it should come out of the mold right away, shouldn't have any issues, and I'm pulling very slowly from the sides first, just to make sure. 
and it looks like we are good. So then slowly push up from the bottom. Fabulous. Look at that. Came out really good. So just as a little extra precaution, you don't really have to, I don't think, but I like to go for another minute on each side. Just in case things are a little tacky. It doesn't feel very tacky to me, but I err on the side of caution. We spent all this time doing this. We may as well make sure we do it right. And while you're waiting for that, go ahead and open your pinch bail so it's going to be wide enough to get onto that pendant. This is just a little fun tree jobby or leaf <laughs> jobby I found at Allegory several years ago, I believe. And I still have some. Okay, I'm gonna take my little, yeah, we are good. I'm gonna take my little doohickey here, just kind of push through. See how easy that was? Now put your pinch panel on and give it a squeeze. If you want some extra security with that, like I said, you can use the resin as a glue. So any of those spots that you see in between the bale and the pendant, just use a paintbrush or something to dab a little bit of resin in there and let the light hit it. You see how we have a little depth there? Because we did the layer first. I That moss did end up rising up again, but I don't care. I actually like it. We worked those air bubbles out. And we are golden. Super cute, really fast, and adorable. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you had fun. I know I did. Please, again, hit that subscribe button, like, share this video with some friends, and post what you've created on Allegory Gallery Design Challenges on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.